When I was younger, I would wash my skin with some of the most questionable things because I didn't know better. At 11, I was using the Costco Kirkland brand like shampoo and conditioner on my face and the conditioner was like hydrating. So I was like, okay, using this on my face and no shit, Sherlock, I was breaking out. But even once I got into aesthetic school and once I started working on skin and actually having a passion for it, I didn't understand the difference between a hydrator and a moisturizer. Most of the things at the store said moisturizing, but in my early 20s, I was like, okay, I have really oily skin, but why am I getting like these weird fine lines? And they don't stick around, but they come and they go. And upon further research, speaking with dermatologists and learning about my beautiful skin, I was like, oh my gosh, you can be oily and dehydrated? But then what's the difference between hydration and being oily? All of this was overwhelming. And in my early 20s is when I started to learn about cosmetic chemistry. And yes, the differences between hydrators and moisturizers. Because if you don't have hydration, your skin isn't going to be as supple or as glowy or as happy. But if you don't have moisturization, you can't lock that in. Hydration is the act of imparting water into the skin, while moisturization is preventing that from leaving and escaping the skin. It's kind of sealing everything in and keeping you, I know people hate this word, but uh, it's the word moist. So what ingredients do we look for in hydrators and how do we use them in a routine? Because yes, normally hydrators with water bases go on a little bit earlier, like in a serum or early moisturizer moisturizer step, and then moisturizers go over the top. And fun fact, some moisturizers can be hydrators and moisturizers in one. So what are some of the most common hydrators used in skincare? You can look for things like, of course, water, which is the universal solvent, and it makes up the bulk of most products, but also things like aloe vera leaf juice or lotus flower water or lotus flower extract or even green tea juice. A lot of people don't realize that, yes, this is basically the water that comes from the aloe vera without the latex, or this is the water that comes from lotus flower, or it's water infused with lotus flower. And people don't realize that that is an amazing hydrator. There are also humectants. Now, what's the difference between a humectant and a hydrator? Humectants draw things in. When you think of the word humectant, think of humectenant. So humectenants are the people who come into your skin and they invite over guests and maybe they have friends and family over for dinner. I don't know. There's an analogy. I hope it serves you well. Humectants are things like hyaluronic acid like glycerin and even different sugar molecules or a lot of those amino acids or peptides we see in creams and in products. Most people don't realize that yes, these can help with signaling within the skin, they can help support the skin and penetrate deeper, but they can also grab onto water and kind of hold it in or closer to the skin. Hyaluronic acid is often spoken about because you know it holds up to a thousand times its weight in water. That is not always true. <laughs> hyaluronic acid can be very finicky and we've done a video on how hyaluronic acid can actually dry you out more and when to use it appropriately. Um, but at its core, let's say that it holds 10 to 50 times its weight in water, that's still a really good humectant that can draw moisture into the skin if that moisture is available topically. A lot of people also don't realize that certain acids can actually be humectants. Glycolic acid, lactic acid, malic acid, all of these AHAs are exfoliants, but they can also grab onto water and put it into the skin deeper. Same with urea, which is another exfoliant. And fun fact, uh, ancient Egyptians used to take baby diapers that were soaked in urine and put them on their faces to get the exfoliation benefits of urea. Fact of the day, you didn't want to know, but now do. Brought to you by your unfiltered acne big sister. Additionally, polyhydroxy acids are amazing humectants. They resemble sugar molecules and therefore they can hold on to and bind onto water as well as sit on top of the skin and gentle chemical exfoliant. Also a lot of sugars, anything that ends in O-S-E indicates a sugar, fructose, dextrose, malatose. You see that in glycerol a lot in foods those ingredients can actually hold on to water. I personally do not consume or use products with honey, but it is important to point out that honey is a humectant. And a lot of animal-derived ingredients, including things like milk, can also act as humectants because of the proteins and the acids in there. And do I support those? No, I think that there are many humectants that you can get that are very good. For example, if you want a really good hyaluronic acid and you have a little bit more money, the Niod hyaluronic acid has actually been treating my skin really, really well. The multi-molecular weight is something I'm testing out and I do love it. And if you want, you know, the little sister of Niod is actually the ordinary. They're owned by the same parent company. And the hyaluronic acid mixed with the lactic acid is a really good exfoliating serum that also imparts some hydration into the skin. If you're looking for something like a toner and don't mind fragrance, Glossier 
Today has a really good kind of multi-humectant blend of different acids and polyhydroxy acids. The Inky List also has an amazing polyhydroxy acid toner. And if you're looking for vegan collagen, uh, Pacifica actually has one that is pretty phenomenal. It does have these vegan collagen peptides that are small enough to get into the skin. No, it's not going to stimulate collagen, which we've done many videos and little breakdowns about, but it is a really good humectant that can pull that moisture into the skin. But you can find a lot of really inexpensive glycerin-based moisturizers at the drugstore. As an example, the Bubble Level Up Balancing Moisturizer has main ingredients of water and glycerin. These are brand new, which I'm trying, but Boots now is available, I think, in Target. They're a European drugstore that now has like skincare that's supposed to be under five to 10 bucks. And they now have these hyaluronic acid moisturizers as well as serums and sleep masks. So testing those out and I'll let you know how it goes. And going back to those interesting aloe vera extracts or lotus extracts, um, Rovectin's Lotus Water Cream is really good. That is an excellent humectant inside of actually a moisturizer, which is great. And a lot of Juice Beauty products products have some aloe vera and Holica Holica has some great aloe vera without the aloe vera latex. So these water-based hydrators and these humectants that hold on to and pull water into the skin are applied, but then we have to keep them in the skin. We have to keep that moisture there. And that is where moisturizers come in. Basically, moisturizers are meant to go on and to lock everything into the skin. And as you know, if you've ever used a moisturizer, there are thinner moisturizers and thicker moisturizers. The thicker ones are normally made with these occlusive materials, these things that are a little bit more difficult to permeate and they keep stuff sealed in. Your petrolatum jelly, your Vaseline, that's the kind of stuff we're talking about, or your really thick silicones. But then there are also these emollients, these more silky type of formulas that do create this film on the skin, but they don't feel as suffocating. And again, when I say suffocating, your skin doesn't actually breathe. I know that's shared a lot in social media and in magazines and in beauty articles online, but your skin doesn't breathe. Your pores don't have alveolar sacs that go through osmosis to get oxygen into your your lungs like that is not how that works but when we say suffocate we just mean the inability for things to escape as easily or other stuff to get in another thing that you maybe didn't know and maybe didn't want to know but now you know occlusives are chonky they are thick and they normally stay on the outside of the skin they really do not penetrate these are things like we spoke about petroleum or petrolatum jelly which is like the purified form if you look at really thick dimethicone type feels so silicones etc oils are actually occlusives as well. And as you know, if you've played around with oils, oils have different weights to them. Some actually can feel like a dry oil. Some are more occlusive and feel that way. But generally, your things like argon oil, rosehip oil, even jojoba oil, those are going to be mildly occlusive because they don't penetrate super deep, but they really support the outer layer of the skin. They smooth over those dead skin cells to make them look more glowy and soft. And as you know, if you've ever tried to make a salad dressing, oils and waters don't naturally mix if they don't have something like a surfactant that forces them to hold hands. And therefore, if you have hydration and water ingredients imparted into the skin and then seal that off with something like an oil, that's a really good way to get the hydration to stay where we want it to be. If you're looking for some really good oils, Trader Joe's has an amazing jojoba oil, which I love. The Ordinary and even Trilogy have some rosehip and argon oils, which I like. And I used to use the Tarte oils, but I don't use those much anymore. Um, Verst actually has a really good daily oil, the antioxidant oil, if that's something you want to use. This rich, moist, soothing cream from Dear Claire's is a wonderful K-beauty option if you want something a little thicker. And then a lot of sleep masks are actually really good, you know, kind of moisturizers. They could be emollients or they could be more occlusive based, but something like the Pacifica sleep mask is amazing. Ceramide products like the vegan one from Pacifica or the one I've been using that I love from Pure Am, that Korean line, or even Juice Beauty. If you want an anti-aging or graceful aging kind of night cream that is a really good moisturizer, the Juice Beauty one. And ceramides are actually made in the outer layer of our skin and they do help to moisturize. And if we can impart more of them in, that's even better. I am oily and acne prone, so I don't love a lot of occlusives, especially if I use them during the day. They make me look like I am greasy. There are also a lot of occlusives that aren't uh, vegan and cruelty-free. Lanolin is actually the oil that comes from sheep. It's basically, again, one of these oils. Beeswax as well it comes from bees and it is super thick and chonky. There are vegan forms of beeswax, which I do like much better. But usually emollients, they are really thick, but they do work if they're blended into a a formula or if you use them you know late at night. Emollients include things like esters and are usually these long chain hydrocarbons. So in a chemistry perspective it's hydrogen and carbon. And emollients are meant to really soften the skin. If you can think of a ribbon like a silk or satin ribbon that is how they are meant to smooth over skin cells and make them feel. And some emollients can be more liquidy, some can be a little bit more chunky, but either way they work to seal things into the skin and to 
actually act as a delivery system for certain antioxidants and other active ingredients as well. There are also different alcohols that can actually be super moisturizing and occlusive to the skin. And people freak out when they hear this, but when I say alcohol, I'm not talking about ethanol that gets you drunk or the rubbing alcohol that dries out the skin and actually causes a lack of moisture and a lack of hydration, but we're talking about fatty alcohols. In chemistry, specifically organic chemistry, anything that ends in OL is an alcohol. And some of these alcohols can be super, super moisturizing and super, super thick and really wonderful to the skin. You see a lot of these on cosmetic ingredients, and these are very different from isopropyl alcohol or denatured alcohol or rubbing alcohol, which evaporates off the skin much easier and can actually cause uh, or exasperate more dryness. Phenoxyethanol as well, not something you have to be really concerned about because phenoxyethanol is at under 2% in all cosmetics as required by safety data and dosing. But phenoxyethanol, again, OL, is technically an alcohol, and that's why it is a preservative, and that's why it evaporates, and it causes a little red flushing for some people. But if you are looking for some thick, chonky occlusives, what should you use? A vegan, cruelty-free version of a nice, thick petrolatum jelly is the Solimo one. And ooh, for a little while last year, I did an experiment, and I'm picking that up again this winter. We'll talk about that. But if you're looking for something more lightweight, you're going to want to look for these lighter oils, like safflower or sunflower oil, instead of something like petrolatum jelly. If you see fatty acids, like oleic acid or lauric acid or myristic acid, these can also be emollients, and depending on what they're mixed with, they might be more occlusive on the skin. Some really good shea butter moisturizers are those from Shea Moisture. Uh, those are some really great ones. There are actually quite a few from K-Beauty as well that work nicely. When it comes to these fatty alcohols, you can almost always find them. This one, again, from Dear Claire's, it's a little bit thicker, but this has cetyl alcohol as well as cyclopentasiloxane, which is one of those silicone-based ingredients that is more of an emollient and less of an occlusive. This silicone-free primary moisturizer from Good Molecules actually has, you know, some of these lighter weight seed oils as well as the shea butter in here. And again, most of the moisturizers that you find on the market are going to have both emollients and occlusives, and a lot of moisturizers can actually, you know, have water and therefore be slightly hydrating. So what's the best routine for you? It's going to depend on how your skin normally is, if it's more dry or more oily. Drier skin types are going to want some of these heavier occlusives, especially at night, and oily skin is going to look more for hydration and lightweight gel textures to lock that in and still moisturize, but not, you know, make the skin feel suffocated, which we know technically, anatomically isn't happening. I've actually left some lists below, so if you have sensitive skin, dry skin, oily skin, or anything in between, there's actually different products that are formulated to be better for those skin types. And if you have additional questions, leave them in the comments box, which is basically one big request fest. Make sure to like the like button, stay hydrated both topically and orally, as well as reapply your sunscreen. And I cannot wait to see you in this next video. <laughs> Love you guys. Bye.